Thank you, Peter, for today. I uh, appreciate all the work you're doing in this, this whole sector, uh, as we all do. So look, we, we focus at Unified on one real key area, which is building intelligence and really delivering to you, especially in the corporate real estate sector, the university sector, et cetera, the data that you actually need to know about so you can run your buildings better. The whole issue with a building is you cannot manage what you cannot measure. What we're delivering to buildings is the measurement tools, the insights that they need so they can really understand what is happening going forward. Look, we're all aware of what's happened right now. The workplace has fundamentally changed. It's not only the workplace, the mentality of various sectors of our workforce has changed. We see very clearly that millenniums don't see why they should come into an office. Now, I'm going to be unpopular. I actually think it's completely crazy that we're, we're actually allowing this, this, this psychology to happen. You know, I, I know from my, my working experience that it is really all about collaboration. And I do get this hybrid, the hybrid options are open and all the rest. But we see clearly that globally, there's different countries working on this in different ways. I also have an office in Hangzhou in China, and 100% of people are back in the office and have been for a very long time. And you see that collaboration much stronger. Now, I think we'll eventually get to a stage where we'll realize that actually working from home isn't the be all and end all. But for now, what's happened for the, for the building sector, the, the people who run these corporate estates, is it's really left them not knowing where they're going. What we're trying to do for these companies is deliver on top of our core solutions we had already, the data they need now from the impact of, of COVID to really manage better. So this is where we have to start talking about net zero and new and sustainability goals. Because 40% of the world is using buildings. And at least, and I say this word, at least 30% of that power is absolutely wasted. Now, currently we have the sector at between 40 to 91% empty. Uh, London is particularly bad right now. It's got an average of about 20% of people back in buildings. And of course, we've seen huge rises in the cost of running buildings or extra cleaning, extra measures put in place. So this idea that not knowing about your occupancy it's, it's got to go away. It's an absolute necessity. If you're going to target how you get to net zero, if you're going to find that actionable data, you need to make a change now. And thankfully, we've been around for quite a few years working on the background technology about how we actually get you there. Now, in terms of UN sustainability goals, I have to disappoint you. It turns out I can't do all of these. But what we are focusing on is delivering innovation in industry delivering sustainable cities and communities and enabling you to know how to get there better, showing you how to consume the power in buildings much more responsibly. And obviously, lowering that um, amount of power being used means we have an impact on, on, on climate. And if any of you do know me, we work so close to our partners all over the world. We, don't, we're not a, we work in collaboration with security, FM teams, building management teams all everywhere. So what do we do? We deliver you the insight to know who is where in a building. Not blue dot tracking, we're not checking toilets or photocopying rooms, we're just giving you zone by zone where you are to deliver you massive benefits. Now the return on investment areas can be broken into five, five, five pieces. One, security. We deliver you who is where in the building. So anybody who breaches security, it is digitalized, it's sent straight to the security team, what's happened, who's involved, and where, where they need to go. For the reception team, so enable better engagement between the members or the employees and the reception teams. As soon as you get out of a lift, your profile is there. They know who you are. They engage with you. And in co-working, this is key to delivering higher retention rates. Now, what we've also done, as I mentioned, we have an office in the Hangzhou in, in, in China where Hike Vision are also based. And in the last year, we've developed, developed three new products. One of them is a COVID mitigation technology where uniquely we detect you walking into your building using our technology. At the same time, we have a focal point where it looks at your temperature. And if you've got a raised temperature, we automatically close down your access to that building and message you straight away and inform HR and inform the security team. And then for FM optimization, I'm gonna show you some charts later on. We're trying to make sure that the FM teams are cleaning in the right places at the right time, not working on a schedule of every two hours, but we inform them based on the number of hours used on every floor of a building, they should go now to the 18th floor, now 24, now 39, now six. And if there's only half the amount of people in a day, they only clean at half the amount of times. But more importantly, and this is really key for me personally, it's the safety and evacuation of high-rise buildings. It's an area that has been completely ignored 
everybody thinks, said things would change after 9-11. Nothing has happened. And the data we collect is actually now going into how we deliver much safer buildings. So how we do this is really very simple. We install in just the lift lobbies and the stairways our sensors. And inside your access card, we embed a new technology, a new chip and antenna. It goes in there. It allows us to see that card in your pocket as you get out of a lift lobby on the floor you should be at or in the lecture hall you should be at as a university student, or in the co-working space that you're a member of, or in the private members club where you're a member of. We're not detecting you anywhere outside that area where you should be. So therefore the GDPR is complete compliant. We analyze all this data, delivering you massively deep analytical tools to let you understand exactly what's happening in your building. And then as I mentioned, from fire evacuation to security breaches to the FM teams, we immediately communicate to the right person with the right information at exactly the right time. So our, our technology has grown not only from what we do with, with access control and the long range detection of that access card. So we don't do access through our chip and antenna, we do it through the traditional chip and antenna in your car right now. So that doesn't change. But then we have occupancy counting. So we're looking at exactly the overall numbers of people coming in, members and non-members. And then of course the ID temperature checks will be built with high vision in Hangzhou as well. And again, this is growing into more and more areas for, for the company. And of course, on this data, we then analyze what's happening. So what you get to see here is what a real evacuation of a high-rise building looks like. At the very point an alarm is raised in a, in, in a building, immediately we tell the management and we tell the fire service in your city, Hanoi, Beijing, Shanghai, London, New York, this is what's happening in this building. This is how many people are there. This is how many of them have a mobility issue. And based on the data we see, knowing where the fire wardens are, and then knowing where the firefighters are as they walk into that building, you get the insights you need to ensure you're delivering the safest evacuation for those people. And again, what we do at that very point when the alarm goes off, we have the number of floors, the number of stairways that building has, the number of people who have got disabilities, how many fire crews, how many fire wardens at the time? Because I'm often here at 10 o'clock at night. There are no fire wardens at 10 o'clock at night on my floor because it's me and some other sad CEO working horrendous hours. But what we do then with our AI techniques through machine learning, through artificial neural networks, through deep random forest networks, is we look at how many people are going to each of those fire evacuation stairways in real time. And when they go over capacity, we can then, through the other companies we collaborated with, send them to other stairways and balance out how that building evacuates in the fastest way possible. This is going to be the gold standard in how all high-rise buildings evacuate going forward. But on the back of the, the reporting tools and detection tools, what we have is things like Live View, where your, your face appears immediately for the security or the reception teams. We have the instant alerts on people who walk in with COVID. Uh, science. We have the occupancy reporting on seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and then the dashboards to allow you to enable to look at what's actually happening in your building. So this looks everything from how the day part numbers, how, how it goes, rises and falls, how many hours each floor has had in, in, in terms of its occupancy levels. You can dive into each company inside a co-working type of environment. You can dive into the visitor list and see where abuse is happening, where pe people are booked in as visitors every day, but actually they're employees. And we can also then, in larger portfolios, allow you to analyze and assess each of your buildings and look at why certain characteristics are different, why your power usage or electricity usage is high in one or your security teams are much larger in, in, in one building compared to another. Now, what we've now done is start build, taking in humidity, CO2, all these extra variables to allow you to look at what's actually happening in your building all the time. On the back of that, what we're delivering is the usage of your building. Now, if we look at this here, this is actually, believe it or not, two floors of the same building in London. And as you see on the left-hand side, it's got an average of about 50 people using it. On the right-hand side, you've got about an average of 125 people a day using it at, at a maximum peak. So you may decide, looking at how people come in and looking at how people leave, you know what, I can cut my energy costs right down. But this is not what... The reality is COVID has changed reality completely. So actually, when you look at seven days a week, you see very clearly that your average is completely pointless. On the building on the left, you have more, way more than double the amount of people on a Tuesday. The building on the left, you have way more than double the people on a Thursday. So you can't just 
power, you put your air conditioning on, on an average. You've got to look at what's really happening. Look at the predictive analysis that every week, Mondays and Fridays, I have far lower peaks. And on certain floors, I've got different measurements coming in as well. So, of course, if you did look at the average, you'll see very clearly the difference between your Tuesday and Thursday here is massive. So what we'll enable you to do is to really micromanage how you use your aircon, how you use your FM teams, your number of receptionists you need on a Monday and Friday, for example looking at all of these variables and showing you how you cut costs. And this is key. The, the money being spent on, 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 on power inside these buildings is vast. Now, our clients include already the likes of Deloitte, Grover Estates, TSB Bank. We've employed in the States. We've employed in a lot of co-working sites already, China and the Middle East so, uh, as, as well. So the value proposition of what we do is we're giving you the real-time insight for you to know what you should lower those costs right down and deliver you the data for better safety and control of your buildings. Now, I work in Canary Wharf Group here, which is the, the, these very, very large area of London, which has a lot of high-rise buildings. Now, Canary Wharf Group are really doing a lot on sustainability, amazing work, and they're incredibly transparent. And therefore, we know from the data they deliver on their energy usage exactly how much energy is being used by every single person in the building, right down to that granular level. And it's this openness of companies like Canary Wolf Group that allows us to be able to go in now and really see how we deploy and how we deliver them massive cost savings. Now, at the moment, the air conditioning is on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Again, I'm one of these sad people who tends to work on a Saturday. There may only be one or two or three of us here on this floor. It's a massive floor plate. Now, by having those sensors on CO2, humidity, we can see is one person really going to change those variables that they highly unlikely. So if we can just cut the cost of power by 10, 20, 30%, they have a very, very rapid return on investment and a huge cost saving. And then from year two onwards, when our harbor has been put in place, as you see, the oral wine model is incredibly fast. Now, what we're trying to look at is cities like Hangzhou, where I'm based, New York, et cetera, which, have got, which New York has got a much bigger issue than even London right now. And take this data, take this insight, take the way that we deliver these systems and deliver the way that they can cut the carbon emissions and more importantly for the buildings, owners, massively cut costs as well. Look, we do need to change and we need to change today. We've seen COP26 is going on right now. We're failing in COP26 in many aspects. You know, India claiming they're going to start looking at this by 2070 is just not acceptable. I've illustrated to you a way that buildings can cut their carbon costs rapidly, quickly. So take my details. We've got a lot of proven cases behind us already. Let's get in touch and we will show you how in Vietnam, where we're based, China, US, Middle East, how you can take this, this, this technology and really make a change in your companies. Thank you again for listening today.